Welcome. I'm pretty sure you have held a leaf up close before. It must have looked simple enough. A midrib, the veins, its slender body called the lamilla or lamina, its apex or tip. These are all characteristics or distinct qualities of the leaf, but there's a lot more we cannot see with our naked eyes. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the qualities that allow such a simple leaf to carry out the complex process of photosynthesis. Let's start with the qualities that are easy to see. A leaf is flat and broad. This flat and broad surface is called the lamella or the lamina. The broad or large surface area of the lamella allows for maximum absorption of light. Lamella is a Latin word which translates to a flake or a thin piece. So it is no surprise to learn that the lamella is also very thin. The thin lamella allows light to penetrate or get into the deeper portions of the leaves. Another way that leaves are adapted for photosynthesis is by way of their position. They are placed or arranged on the branches in such a way as to collect as much sunlight as possible. Now, let's look closer at the parts of the leaves you and I cannot ordinarily see. The leaf has three layers overall. It has a very important layer called the mesophyll. This layer lies between the upper and the lower epidermis. But before we concentrate on the mesophyll, there are the epidermal cells. These are really thin cells that make up the upper epidermis, and this thinness allows a lot of sunlight to reach the mesophyll. Now to what I'll regard the most important layer, the mesophyll. It is rich in cells that contain chloroplasts, and it is split into the palisade mesophyll and spongy mesophyll. The palisade cells are packed with chloroplasts and lie at a right angle to the upper epidermis. That's at 90 degrees. These chloroplasts lie at the periphery or outer edge, and this arrangement allows for easy activation during photosynthesis. The palisade cells also contain large vacuoles where they store the products of photosynthesis. The spongy mesophyll lies beneath the palisade mesophyll, and it has large intercellular spaces or large air spaces between its cells, a lot like a sponge. These air spaces aid the efficient diffusion or movement of oxygen and carbon dioxide around the cells of the leaf. The guard cells are bean-shaped cells in the lower epidermis, and they surround or guard the stomata. They help in controlling the rate of transpiration or gaseous exchange by opening and closing the stomata. They are the only cells in the epidermis that contain chloroplasts, and this gives them the added advantage of contributing to the production of photosynthetic products. Stomata is plural for stoma, and they are pores in the lower epidermis that are open and close to control gaseous exchange or the movement of gases into the leaves. The xylem is the part of the plant that transports water from the roots up to the stem and then to the leaves, while the phlegm can be described as the part that moves manufactured food from the leaves to other parts of the plant. While the xylem and phlegm are not necessarily parts of the leaf, they are important parts of the plant as a whole because they are the two types of transport systems found in vascular plants. We've gone through so much detail on the many ways a seemingly simple leaf is built for photosynthesis. We mentioned its broad, flat shape and its thin lamella, and also the position of the leaf. Microscopically, we talked about the thin epidermal cells, the arrangement of the palisade cells in the palisade mesophyll, the abundance of chloroplasts in these palisade cells, and the large vacuoles that act as a store for photosynthetic products. We elaborated on the sponge-like nature of the spongy mesophyll with its large intercellular spaces, 
the guard cells that contain chloroplasts and also open and close the stomata. And the stomata itself, the pores that allow gaseous exchange between the leaf and its environment. And although the xylem and phloem are technically not part of the leaf, they are important in the movement of materials to and from the leaves. Turns out our simple leaf is not so simple. I'll see you around. Keep learning. <laughs>